Hi everyone, today I'm going to do quite a full on makeup look. Just have fun with makeup really. So I'm going to do really quite strong colours on my eyes. Mainly the deep cherries and reds. I found two nice palettes that I want to use for this. I'm going to start by using all over my eyelids. I'm um, sorry, I'm using the Pro Prime, I forgot I was doing them. I'm going to use mainly this palette, which is a Marc Jacobs one. I just really like the colours, the really shiny, deep cherries and plum colours. But I thought, with me, and I don't know if this is a good tip in general, I think it is, to use something that's a bit more neutral on the eye first. Because if I use just all reds and all plums, I can start to get a slightly sore eye look, like that kind of rabbity eyes. So I'm going to use the brown, more golden brown shades from this palette. This also has sort of a bit of purple in as well, but it does have more of the neutral browns in. So I'm going to start with probably, let me see, yeah, this shade here. This is a Fenty palette. But any, what I mean is just any kind of like almost natural warm brownie tone that is just a good base. This just grounds all the red shades. So I'm just doing a wash over the eyelids and up to the socket line and slightly over the socket line as well. I'm going to get my shape and everything sorted later, but I'm going to look straight ahead as well, just so that I am getting a little bit of that shadow coming above the socket line. I'm going to use this along the lower lash line as well. Again, it's just like a base coat of something that's not too vibrant. Okay, so in with the palette. So I'm going to start with this, which is the sort of brightest pinky of all the shades. I'm going to use the same brush actually that I've used before, so it will have a little bit of that golden neutral brown on there. Now I'm going to start to just bring it at the outer edge and slightly into the socket line as well. Use a clean brush just to blend that all in together. I'm going to do a little bit more of a sweep up with the sides, but for now I'm just getting the colour on. So next I'm going to use this deeper shade. This looks like quite a dark purpley red shade, maybe just at the outer edge there. A little bit more at the roots of the lashes. Just starting to get some smokiness there. I'm going to finish that shape as well when I put some liner on in a sec. So just the deep shade at the, mainly the outer edge underneath. Now I'm going to go back in with my brush. This one had it's had the brown on and it's had the plummy shade. It's quite a good way of working it because then you get everything starts to blend in nicely. This is like a, a lilac-y shade, which looks really nice. I'm just gonna try a little bit of that. It's got more of a sheen to it. So I'm gonna maybe use this more on the actual lid for a little bit of light reflection there. Now I'm going back in with the lilac -y shade and I've just done a little bit around the center there underneath my eyes, not much, just to pick up that light in the middle. So before I move on, I'm going to do my liner. I'm going to use the Grandiose. So this is the black one, black Grandiose. 
I'm going to start just at the edge of my eyes, so just beyond the center. And just going really close to those lashes. Then I'm going to wing up, which I'm going to have to keep looking ahead for. Because I have a fold in my eyelids and I have different folds on different eyelids. So for me to get a really nice clean wing, I have to do a bit of backwards and forwarding. This is a really good tip. Just keep looking ahead so you can see where your wing is. And once you've got your shape, you can always just go back in and fill in. I find this nib to be so easy for applying liner. So just really into the roots of the lashes to start with. I think it's worth time just getting it in between the lashes. It gives you so much definition. And looking back at the other one, and this is the one that's tricky for me because I've got that fold. So you can see as I'm trying to bring it up, it goes straight into two folds on my eyelids. I always have a little Q-tip with some remover on because halfway through, I usually need to do a little bit of a clean up. So yeah, whereas this one comes straight onto a flat bit of skin, I've got two folds to go over here. So it's going to have to be a little bit thicker. Then I'm going to go in with a gel liner with a very small brush and just fill in any little gaps or any changes that I want to make. So you can see where my eyes are closed, I have to go quite thick at the top here. So that when they're relaxed, they look, it looks more even. And I want it to look quite dramatic. So I'm going to do the same with the other one. Now I'm using the darker shade from the palette again, into the roots of the lashes at that outer corner. So I can kind of join up with the liner on the top. So I'm getting more definition around this side of the eye. I'm also going to use the same darker color just into that crease there as well. So I start to build up a bit more intensity. I'm blending it in with the lilac. For some reason, when I use this lilac shade under my eyes, it almost feels like it's stinging, but I don't understand why because I'm using all the other shadows and it's fine. But it feels like, not stinging, just makes my eyes feel a bit funny, strange. Never ever had that before. Okay, so onto eyelash curlers. So now I'm using some black mascara. This is Hypno's Extra Black. So right down to the roots of the lashes, putting as much of the mascara into the roots of the lashes this really helps to frame the liner. It makes, makes the liner look better as well. You get that, um, it just pulls it all together. And then underneath, the same thing, all the way along the lower lashes too. Putting as much bulk onto the roots again, and then just combing that through. You can see it starts to bring the whole eye look together. So before I go on to foundation, I want to try this light shimmery shade. This is actually glitter. I might touch this up once I've done my um, concealer and everything, but it's quite good to do this now because then anything that drops down that I want to clean up, I've got time to clean it up. I might also try the red glitter here. Let's just see where we can pop that. Maybe just towards the end of the shadow there before it fades into the liner. It's really bright, kind of cherry color. It's really nice. Okay, so now I'm going to clean up my skin and just get all of this 
everything that's dropped down. Use some remover. It's mainly just glitter actually. The dark shadow didn't really come down, which is good. So now I'm going to do base. You've seen me do this many times before, so I might even speed this, this one up and not talk too much. Before I finish my base, I'm going to use this highlighter stick by Hourglass. So I'm, I've still got some more concealing to do. I thought this one would be good because it's rose gold, so it's a little warmer, a little more pinky than I would often use for highlighter. But I think with this look and with all these colours, it will add um, definitely a certain richness. That on the top lip. Now I'm going to do some pinpoint concealing. So I put a light wash of base all over, but now I need to go in and just cover any marks. Now I'm just doing a little bit of powdering. Not everywhere. I want to keep the cheeks quite... Um, don't want to mattify my cheeks. I'm going to use some cream blush later, so just around the centre of my face. Um, wherever I've done most of the concealing, which is sort of around here and here. So I'll do a bit more of this later. So next to my lip, I'm going to use Velvet Myth with a brush. I'm going to start by just following the natural lip line. This is just adding another layer of berryness. Because the eyes are already quite dramatic, I'm actually going to use a small, it's the brush that I went underneath my eye with, with the darker shade. I'm going to use this. This to create quite a soft edge on the lip. So it feels more like a stain. Since we've got a lot going on with the liner and the glitter and everything. It's kind of like a diffused edge. And I'm going to pat. I'm also going to use that on cheeks. I'm just going to put a little bit on the back of my hand and I'm going to use the highlighter that I used which is the rose quartz one. So I'm just mixing those two together. It 
So this is giving a really nice flush, but it's quite, although it's berryish, it's quite light and shimmery. So it matches the lipstick really well, but it looks quite highlightery as well. Bring that up to the edge of the shadow there as well, just to add a little tiny bit onto the brow bone before I do my brows. So it all looks very lively, not too powdery, quite shimmery, healthy. Let's check my lip. So the final thing I'm going to do is just do my little bit of brows. All I'm going to do is add a tiny bit of length there and fill in one gap here. Oh, this is broken. Oh, there, isn't it? there it is. A couple of strokes. I don't really want the brows to be too heavy anyway. So it's not com they're not competing with the eye look. And I think that's it. I could do some false eyelashes, but I think there's plenty going on with the lip and the eye and the liner and the bits of glitter and shimmer and all of that. So if I was going to do lashes, I would do probably three on the outer corner just to add to that wing shape. Um, but I think I'm actually going to leave it today. So yeah, I think that is the finished look and not really going anywhere, but I do feel fantastic. And it's really nice to play with all of these purpley colors and deep kind of pink shades and I think just grounding it with that neutral shadow first and the liner and just getting that mascara right down to the roots of the lashes so you do have that definition means that those kind of pinky and purpley shades can be so much easier to wear so I hope that was helpful and I'll see you soon bye